But I just have, I just, I'm really feeling a strong pull of this word. And I'm not going to hold you long because I know we've already been through, uh, um, we've already been ministered to. Amen. But the title of the message today is called, Oh, to be kept by Jesus. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. It's an old Baptist hymn. That's an old one. I don't even, I didn't even, yes, come on, Mama Loretta. She, gonna, she could do a whole, she could do a whole sermonic selection if we, I should have had her prepped in time. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. Come on, LJ. LJ, know it. Just that title alone, oh, to be kept by Jesus. So I, 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 I'm, I feel like I'm on a, a mission. I feel like I'm on an assignment because one of the biggest lies of the enemy is to convince you that God is not concerned with the details of your life. That is one of the biggest strategies of the evil one, is to make you think that you are forgotten, to make you think that God doesn't care, that you're going through all these things. Anybody ever felt like that before? I know I have. And I just, you hear it and you're like, you know, I think that is true. I do got evidence. It feel like God never, you know, this is one of the biggest tactics of it. It's, it's, a, it's downright character assassination. That's what it is. It's always trying to come against the character of God. And I'm mad about it. I'm tired of it. I feel like I, I love to expose the enemy. I love to expose the enemy tactics. I feel like that guy on Dateline, NBC, remember that? With the, uh, the Predators edition, where they would just step up and be like, wasn't that you? Was that you? I see you on the camera. That's how I feel about the enemy. Wasn't that you who told brother so-and-so that? No, no. Wasn't that you who made her feel bad? I feel like it is, I am on assignment. I am on assignment to expose the tactics of the enemy. Because the, t- the passage we're going to talk about today is a short passage. But it is proof that our God is very intentional. How many people believe that? I'm going to need y'all to help me today. God is very intentional. And before we get started, I just want to take a real quick survey of the room. Have you ever had a good thing in the wrong season? Anybody had a good thing in the wrong season? I've been there before. Um, I had a time in my financial life, uh, financial fitness guy, um, that I felt like I was, you know, we were, we were doing all right. So we decided to, you know, get a luxury car. We decided to get, we was going to get a big body Benz. Tommy, remember that? Oh, we was going, we going to get us a luxury. You know, we doing, we doing all right. And we got a nice luxury car. We was rolling and, you know, doing good. But it was a Mercedes. That's what it was. I ain't going to, it was a nice little luxury, big body. You know, we was all nice. We didn't have no problem doing the notes. The notes was fine. But the problem, the problem came in. The problem was the upkeep. Anybody ever had a luxury car? The the repair, the upkeep, the maintenance, like that, that. You gotta take, come on Sister Sheila, help me preach this. Cause I didn't know. I thought I was just gonna have a cute car and be stunting and just be out here. And then lights kept coming on. Bring back to the dealership. We need to check your oil. We need to do a maintenance on your engine. Like, unnecessary lights. I was like, leave me alone. It's time. We want to make sure your leather is okay. Like, it was like, no. And every time you go, it's it's a fee involved. So it wasn't the wrong, nothing was wrong with the car, but it was the upkeep was the problem. New things are nice, but maintenance is where we usually fall off. Some of y'all just got a new car, and you was like, nobody's eating in this car forever. And you made a pact. And you told them kids, put them McDonald's fries up. You're not eating them in here. And then we see you two years down the line, the whole, the crumbs everywhere. Fries under the seats, just everywhere. The problem with new things is maintenance, right? Maintenance. According to our passage today, I want to celebrate God. Sometimes we come here like, God, I need, God, I need. But this is a day that we're going to celebrate the Lord. And I want to celebrate a facet of God that I think is amazing. You know, God is multifaceted. 
that, that every time there's no, there's an infinite amount of things that we could keep worshiping God about. Matter of fact, when the angels see God and they cry, holy, 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 it's because they keep seeing different facets of God forever and can just praise him into infinity. So there's another facet of God. And it's, the, it's one, it's the, it's the God who keeps. It's the God who keeps. Turn to um, Psalms 121. 121. I promise I'm not going to keep you long. Psalms 121. I'm from the uh, ESV version. And if you see something that just whew, touches your heart, just throw up your hand and say amen. Do something. Just react to the word of God. It says, I will lift my eyes to the hills from where comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will never slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. Again, the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. That's enough to run right there. I should have ran. Y'all missed a cue. That was good all by yourself. I could just drop the mic and say, God bless you. Good night. Because God, I have good news for us. There is good news in here. Unlike my Mercedes, the one who purchased your soul has no problem with the upkeep. Come on, that's good news. That was better than what I heard. The one who purchased your soul has no problem with the upkeep of your life. And I want to just remind you that God has a good track record of sustaining. Do y'all know that? Go through all. First of all, just think of your life. And then I want to go back to the scriptures. He has a great track record. We are serving a God who is undefeated. You can find no fault or blemish. In Deuteronomy, it said the children of Israel, when they were walking around the wilderness, it says, yet the Lord during 40 years that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes did not wear out, nor the sandals on your feet. You trying to tell me over a million people are walking around in the wilderness for 40 years and their clothes never wore out? Their sandals, they didn't even have like what we got, like quality leather or whatever. The sandals never worn out. This is the kind of God that we got is taking responsibility for people, wardrobes and clothes. I got into the fabrics. I got into the leather. And I said, it's no, be, be still. Like, we're going we gonna to stand together. So if the God who can do that for clothes, if he can do that for clothes, what can God do in your life? How, what can he do in your life? Come on, I'm going to need a little help in here. Come on, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm more hyped up than this because I'm so excited about this. When you begin to get a revelation of who really God is, it changes everything, everything. So in the Psalms 121, the he, this is so good. This is such good news. The word for keep, the Hebrew word for keep that was mentioned six times. Did y'all get that? It's packed with meaning. In essence, come on, I want you to think about your life when I say this. In essence, it means that God will put around you a wall of protective thorns. God will keep you. God will guard you. God observes your every move, all your coming ins and all your goings. It means to God will keep close watch. Come on, think about this. Close watch to preserve you, to observe you. God's going to be your bodyguard. Y'all getting the picture here? God's going to be your bodyguard. God's on duty. God's going to secure you. God is very careful to pay attention. This is the God that we serve. So this kind of does, it does not compute in our minds because that, that's not where we thought. We thought that God forgot about us. We thought that God wasn't watching. We thought that things slipped through the cracks. We was like, God, where are you? Am I all alone? Have you ever felt like that? Come on, but this verse says that look how intentional God is over your life. Anybody ever play soccer? 
Anybody play soccer? Okay, I got a couple soccer players, a couple soccer players. Anybody ever watch soccer? I mean, there it is, there it is. All right, one person has a very important job, and they call him the goal, goalkeeper, yes, or a goalie. But the, goal, the official name is a goalkeeper. Think goalkeeper. You ever see that person when them balls come? They are everywhere. They are diving. They are, you know, blocking. They getting hit with ball. That is the image that I want you to have of God over your life. Everything the enemy tries to grow, bro, throw your way, he's blocking it. He's diving. He's moving. He's doing all the things. God is a keeper. Is anybody excited about this? I know, I don't want to turn this into a pep rally. Cause I feel like, I feel like, side note, I feel like a lot of churches, like, it turns into a spiritual pep rally. And like, I love Jesus, less I do. I love Jesus, how about you? And then you got to prove to the person who's doing it. Like, you don't love Jesus, you should have. Like, I don't want it to turn to that. Because it just becomes like, I got to do all the things to prove to you that I really love Jesus so you can stop bothering me, right? That's not what this is. I'm just, I'm just praying that God will show you a new facet of who God is in your life. Look at the details of God's keeping power. In verse 3 and 4, it says, he who keeps you never sleeps or slumbers. Come on, look at the God that we serve. Never sleeps or slumbers. This is hard for us to realize in a human context because we, we need sleep. You go here, try to, you ever try to stay up a couple of days? You got college days, your party days. You're like, oh, yeah, I don't need sleep. And when you're in your 20s, I don't sleep, sleep for, huh? Sleep is for the week. I, I'm going, I'm up, we out. Day three, your body will shut down. Like you will just be sitting up somewhere done right? We don't have the context for this, but can you imagine that we serve a God who never sleeps, never slumbers, never needs to take a break, always has a watchful eye over you? Come on, this is the God that we serve. This is why that um, Nightmare on Elm Street back in the day, that messed me up because I, I'm eventually going to have to go to sleep. And that's not cool that y'all would write this movie like this because I got to go to sleep. But we serve a God who is always on duty. While you are resting, God is working. Come on, you can to tell yourself that sometimes. While I'm resting, God is working. God wants you to get sleep. God made us before iPhones were even existed. Sleep is the thing that charges our battery, right? Like we really need that to fill up. God don't need it. God is so other. God is so other. God has to use all these analogies just for us to get it. Okay, God's like a keeper. God is like bread. God is like, we got to do all these things just so we can wrap around our minds who this God is. He's not sleeping on your issues. He's not sleeping on your problems. He's not sleeping on what's going on in this society. Our God never sleeps. Matter of fact, he took a break just to, just to give us a model. Like, look, I could keep, I could keep going. I got eternity. But I'm going to a little break, show y'all what a Sabbath is, because y'all going to need it. I don't need it. Y'all going to need it. Right? Come on. The next thing, the details of his keeping power. Verse 5, it says, the Lord who keeps you is your shade on your right hand. Come on, God. You better be a shade. Anybody ever lived in a hot area? You ever been in somewhere really hot? And then you get into a, a cool shade, and it makes it's like a difference of degrees between being in the sun and being in the shade. That's what God is trying to tell you. That's what I'm like. I'm like that, that refreshing shade. That's who I am. You know, extended time in the sun can be harmful. Heat stroke, anybody ever had heat stroke in here? That's a whole little thing. Um, it could be harmful, it could be fatal. But our God, when the heat is on in our lives, we talked about that last week. Sometimes God turns up the heat to get the dross out of us. But sometimes there's heat in your life, hot things going on, things that you need relief from. God is like, I, I'm your shade. I'm that thing. I'm that thing that cool you down. That's me. God is a shade. So every time you use your visor on your car, I want you to think about God. Every time you put on a little visor cap, think about God. That's who God is. Every time you pull that thing over, that's God. 
Give God a praise every time you do that. God, you are a shade. When things get hot, come on, God is a shade? You shield me like when the children of Israel sent the fire by night and a pillar by day. You shield my life. God is a shade. God is a wonder. All right, verse 7. It says, God will keep. God will keep you from evil. God will keep your life. He said two keeps. God will keep you from evil and God will keep your life. Look at God. It's a miracle that you are here right now. Sit and think about that. It is a miracle that you are sitting in these blue seats. It is a miracle that God has kept your life this far. It is a miracle that God has kept you from evil. Look at everything that's going on in our, in our world. Look at everything that's going around us. Come on, this is a day for us to give God a praise. This is not a day for to sit and contemplate like, mm, no, we're going to open up our mouths and give God a praise. Look at you sitting here with all you've been through, with all the near misses, all the accidents, all the trouble. We've been, we're living through a pandemic. And God has saw fit to have us in this place. He's kept us from evil. He's kept us from hurt, harm, and danger. Every time you pull back up into your house, it's a miracle. Because somebody left out for work and didn't come back that day. Come on, it's a miracle. God, God keeps us, keeps on keeping us. It's a miracle that I'm here. Think of everything you lived through. Think of everything that should have took you out. Come on, the old folks said, my, my soul looks back in wonder. How I got over. My soul looks back and wonders. How did I make it? How? How, Sway? How am I sitting here? Come on, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't have enough self-reflection sometimes. Sometimes we really need to say, God, you kept me from danger seen and unseen. It could have been worse. Tamara was singing it. It could have been me outdoors. No food, no, it could have been me. Thank you, God, for your keeping. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. Jesus is a keeper. Verse 8, eight says, the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in forevermore. Now, just think about it. He'll keep your going out and your coming in forevermore. This verse is not saying that life won't happen. How many know that everybody, every human being is going to experience the full breath of the human experience? All of us. We are not exempt from life. No matter how righteous you are or how ratchet you are. We're going to all experience life. It's a part of the human existence. So this verse is not giving you a get out of jail free card. All right? So this is not what this is saying. We, but the, what it is saying is that God will keep you through it. God will keep you through it. How many people going through something right now? The guarantee in your life is that God will keep you through it. Even in sickness, God will keep you. Even in grief, God will keep you. Even in disappointments, God will keep you. This is our promise. It doesn't mean that things won't happen again, but God will keep you through it. How many have been through a hard trial? You've been through a tough time. You've been through a severe loss. You've lost a loved one. You've been through hurt or disappointment. You've been through betrayal. You've been through sickness. Look at God. Did not God keep you through it? You're still here with the right mind. You're still here. We're ready to give God praise. That God is a keeper. Hallelujah. No matter what, the keeper will be there. The keeper will be there and all will be well. That song says, it is well with my soul. Isaiah 26 and 3. You got to write this down. You got to keep this. You got to put this in your bookmark. You got to, this is your go-to. This is the one you put on your mirror on the morning. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast. I like the, the old school version says, stayed on you. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on God because they trust you. 
The caveat there is that they trust you. That, uh, God, I trust you. Just like Tamara said, God, I trust you. God, even through the hardest thing I'm facing, I will trust you. God will keep you, keep your mind in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. That is a promise to take down to your very last moment. Come on. Now, now, and, I'm, and this, is, this is the wrap up. God is keeping you. How many believe that God is keeping you? So God is keeping you for a purpose. Do you know that? God is keeping you for a purpose. God's not just um, doing all this just to put you up on a shelf and to be like, you know, that was my testimony back in 1983, right? God is keeping you for a purpose. Three things, and we out the door. First thing God's going to do, why is God keeping you? Why am I still here? Why did I live? Why did I not die? Why, did I, why wasn't that me in the accident? Why wasn't that me in the shooting? Why am I still here? Number one, for God to get the glory out of your life. For God to get the glory. There's some things that only God can do. Only God can do it. Only God can get the glory out of your life. you got to read this verse. It's Titus 3. Titus 3. Can y'all see this? This verse, Titus 3, is another one I want you to take home with you. Take it home with you and read it. I might not make it through this verse. I'm just going to tell you. I might have to run in the middle of it because it's so good. Y'all ready? It says, verse 3 says, For we ourselves were once foolish, hmm, disobedient, led astray. It should have said run amok, but that's okay. Slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice, envy, hated by others, and hating one another. Was that anybody's testimony at one time? God, my God, that little sentence. But when the goodness and loving kindness of our God and Savior appeared, come on, I'm gonna need some little, come on, give me some Oregon, LJ, cause they ain't feeling me, Oregon. They ain't feeling me, LJ. It say, but. When the goodness and the loving kindness of our God and Savior appeared, he saved us. Now, why did he save us? Not because of the works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. By the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So being that, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Come on, that said that we are heirs, that I am a child of God, that I am an heir, that I am an heir. I am a child of God. These are all the benefits that I have in the kingdom. It was for God's glory. Why did God save me? Why did God keep me? It was nothing I could do on my own. How many have that, that revelation? I, I couldn't do it. I tried. I failed. I tried. I failed. But if something happened when the Holy Ghost came on me, when I got my help from God, that's when the change came. Hallelujah. It was only God that has kept me so far. It's only God. Only God can do it. I can't keep myself. I tried. I keep going back if it was on me. I'd still be in dumb relationships if it wasn't for God. It's the keeping power of God. Second thing, why is God keeping us? To be a witness. Y'all saw my girl Tamara up here. Somebody needs to know if Jesus could do it for you, he could do it for them. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to get to see that what God can do. Like, girl, you? It's like, girl, we was together. Or, boy, for real, bro, we used to be up in there. Like, no, if God can do it for you, I know he can do it for me. But th- this is what happens. This is what happens. We, we, we only tell our testimony here. You know, we're among the saints. And that's cool. I mean, I, but thank you. I've been encouraged by that. But God wants us to take our testimony out there. It says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Come on, somebody needs to hear the testimony of your life. 
Somebody needs to know that, hey, I'm still struggling with it, but God, man, I'm progressing. I'm not perfect, but I'm progressing because God has kept me. I've been kept by Jesus. I've been kept to be a witness. I have evidence in my life. God has given each one of us evidence. Evidence, God, thank you, God. I wanna be a witness, this is the last thing. The last thing, God is keeping us for a purpose, for his glory, to be a witness. But this last verse is so special. It's Jude 24 and 25. Jude only has one chapter. So Jude 24 and 25. I'm going to need the organ for this one. Deke, we running. My God, today. Y'all need to stretch? We stretching? Woo! We used to say that before we, before we left church. This was what we would say before we left church. Oh, come on, Sister Sheila. Don't, no, oh, snap. Oh, Lord, because I'm just trying to think of it. I'm trying to get some people who remember the keeping power of God. Now, this is, this is the big one because God is keeping us for the end goal. Somebody say the end goal. Jude 24 and 25 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now, our other verse said he'll keep your feet from falling, right, in, in, in Psalms. But this is telling us that God is able to keep us even when we slip, even when we mess up. You know, that was a, a, this Psalms 21 was a song of ascent. They were going up a hill, and sometimes they slipped a little bit. But they're, the God was, was they, they were saying that God is able to keep you from falling. Now, we might slip, but God will keep us from completely getting out the game. There's something in you that won't let you stay down. There's something in you that says, God, I got to get back up. I got to go back to church. I need to start praying again. God will keep you from falling. So this is the end game. When you stand before God and you're face to face with God, you will be able to stand before God face to face without shame, without shrinking back, without saying, God, I know I could have did more. No, God will keep you. God will keep you now unto him that is able to keep you from fa falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. How many want to see God's face with joy? How many want to stand before God and say, God, it was only you. Only you did it. Only you kept me. I couldn't have did it on my own, God. It was your help. It was your help, God. I did it because, and it says, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory. Come on, give God glory. Be majesty. Be dominion. Be power. Both now and forevermore. God, when we stand before you, God, we want to see your face with joy. We want to love your appearance. We want to look back and say, God, you kept us. It was only you. My soul looks back and wonders how I made it over. God, we love you. We glorify you, Jesus. Our soul looks back. All to be kept by Jesus. Come on, lift your head and say, God, all to be kept by Jesus. I know what it feels to be kept by Jesus. I got a testimony. God brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. God, thank you for keeping me. Come on, somebody tell him, thank you for keeping me. Thank you for keeping me. I couldn't keep myself. Thank you, oh God. Come on, give God a praise on today. God, I thank you. You know me. You know me, God. I would have been went back. I would have been did all the things I used to do. But it's your keeping power. Hallelujah. Oh, to be kept by Jesus. God, we want to be kept by you. How many want to give God glory out of your life? God, I just want you to get the glory. God, I want you to use my life as a testimony. God, I want to be able to stand before you face to face and say, God, I have no righteousness of my own, but it was because of your blood. It was because of the Holy Spirit that you kept me. God, I, right now in this moment, I need you to keep my mind. Come on. God, I need you to keep my mind. 
I need you to keep my heart. God, I have loved ones that I'm concerned about. I need you to keep my loved ones. God, I have a relationship that I'm concerned about. Lord, will you keep it? Come on, we're committing all these things to God. God is the ultimate keeper, the ultimate sustainer, the ultimate one who can preserve. It's a miracle what God can do in our lives. And we're, won't, we're not always perfect. Someone told me yet last week, like, uh, I already f- I failed my test from last week. That's okay. We serve a God of second, third, fifth, 25th, 100 and second chances to continue to get it right by his grace. So remember, we are children of God. It's not performative. We don't have to do things to earn God's love and grace. But what we can do is celebrate who God is. Let us not be like the lepers who got healed and went about, went about their way. God, we want to be that one person who comes back and says, thank you, God. You kept me. It's only you that's keeping my mind, keeping my heart. God, I don't even know how I'm standing here today. All that I've been through, all the trauma, all the, the, the craziness, all the threats of my life. God, it's only you that has kept me to this point. So, Lord, I'm committing my life. I'm committing everything to you today. Underneath your keeping power, underneath your ability, God, we celebrate you today. We give you a shout out. It was only you, Jesus. Come on, it was only Jesus. Look back over your life and say it was only Jesus. It was only, it was only you, God. It was only you, God. It was only you. Some of us should have been dead. Some of us should have been in prison. Some of us should have been locked up somewhere. But it's the keeping power of God. So when our closing reflections, they're very simple. Think back over your life of all the times God kept you. And this is one thing I want you to do. Begin to worship God for being a keeper. Begin to worship God. Think back over all. And sometimes somebody needs to go and sit down and write a, a little journal. If everything you can think of, that thing will be filled up. Two, think about everything that's going on in your life right now. And in our current climate. And there's one thing I want you to do. Begin to worship God for being a keeper. Will you allow God to get the glory through the testimony of God's keeping power in your life. Somebody needs, someone is struggling with what you've already struggled with. Someone is wondering, how can I get through this? Someone is dealing with a sickness, a divorce, a betrayal. Someone is going through a relationship problem and they need to hear from you. How did the Lord keep you? How do you still have joy? How are you still standing? How do you come to work every day with peace? Why is there a smile on your face? And you can say, hey, oh, to be kept by Jesus. That's my only testimony. So God, we give you these things. We commit them unto you. We say we love you and we thank you. We celebrate you today. All of these things are all benefits of those who have a personal relationship with Jesus. So if that is not you and you like, hey, I won't end on that. Can you just repeat this prayer after me and just say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. I need this in my life. So I give you my heart. I submit to you. And I say, I want to start this journey with you today. In Jesus name, amen. Man, and thank God. Well, come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise.